Mr. Elam Moncello Ahimanji. Did, yes, sir. Did, did I get the last name right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about the first time you and I did a podcast. <clears throat> you remember that first time? I, I uh, think it's been ye- years by uh, now. Yeah, years, but like I, I feel like the first time we met was a podcast. We just didn't record it. <laughs> 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 one of many, oh, one of many exactly. we were doing back then. But I, I was thinking yes. about it the other day, and I'm like, man, that was such a journey. Uh, I don't even recall the different things we we spoke about. I think one was your experience uh, as a Jehovah Witness. The other one was yeah, yeah. like starting the business, and then just yeah. both of our paths coming together. And exactly. I remember afterwards asking you, or you might have even told me, you're like, hey, that was my first podcast, and I was like, yeah. wow, yeah, yeah, that is. That's impressive. Uh, exactly. And I, I think since then, this is like uh, my third. <laughs> okay, good. We're, mo- we're moving up. We're making progress. Okay. We're moving up in the world. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm grateful that we're able to do it back then. I'm grateful we're able to do it now. If anything, I was also thinking it's like, maybe I should give you the co-founder role at this point for moments <laughs> worth remembering. Because <laughs> you, you really yeah. have played such a big role in developing a lot of this and and i shared this with you before but one of the things that you had shared with me when i was first starting off is the whole concept of connecting with key contacts for each one of the books instead of spending hours and hours gathering you know 20 individual contacts per book because it's it's a very time consuming thing uh when it comes to putting this together so you played a big role in that Thank and you. then the Thank uh, you. yeah the other idea that you told me, which might be in the same exact place that you're at right now. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this, but you were cleaning out the fridge, mm-hmm. and you had said, "Think about what all of this can do in the world and the impact it can have, such as literally solving wars." And mm-hmm. you know, it really stuck with me, not in the context of maybe solving like the physical wars that we're going right. through, but mental wars, right? right. Mental right. battles between ourselves and our neighbors and our friends and whoever else that we're having conflict with. Exactly. So yeah, unofficially, I think it's fair to say that you have been uh, promoted to oh, the man. co-founder of Moment. Moment oh, I, <laughs> I, love that. I love that honor, but honestly, it was <laughs> like you said, when you know when you hear a good idea or you just hear something that makes sense, um, you know, things just start flowing. And I remember when you were bringing this idea to me, I'm like, this is such an, uh, you know, perfect thing for Oleg, you know, just like, you know, everything that you, your values are and everything you've been mm. working on in, in your life. I think this sums up kind of your life mission as the way that I understood it so well. So that's why when you, when you immediately brought it up, it was just like it, it, all the possibilities just opened up right away. So, yeah, um, I'm glad to see it actually, you know, you actually, yeah, executing it on exactly what you plan to do and seeing how it's impacted different lives, how it's impacted my life and the people around me um so yeah it's it's truly truly beautiful and just getting started mm. <laughs> well let me ask you this Be- before yep. we dive into kind of your experience of receiving the book and contributing mm-hmm. to different books mm-hmm. do you believe that all experiences all events in your life contribute towards that one thing and mm-hmm. do you think that the things that you've been through are contributing towards delaware limo like is delaware limo larger part of a larger purpose or is that a means to get to a larger purpose for what you envision for your life? That's awesome. That's a great question. So I think Delaware Limo is just the tool that we're, I'm using at the moment uh, to express what I want to do in this life and everybody that works with me as well. But I think one of my life purposes or, or what I'm able to do by working in a company and um, that shares a product and service with the world is I genuinely believe that everybody has something to offer, um, ext- something extremely valuable to offer to the rest of the world. Um, a lot of times people don't get put in the opportunity to be able to deliver that. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think um, everything we're doing with Delaware Limo is really just a lot, yeah, putting people in the best position to do, uh, to provide the best thing that they can do. Um, you know, so it, um, so yeah, so I guess in this, in the simplest way, um, yeah, uh, I think uh, that's, you know, what I'm doing right now. Um, through the work that I do. Um, and I, I definitely would like to take, uh, sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Um, sometimes it feels, you know, it feels like the only way 
to achieve that end goal, you know, you have to do some type of like nonprofit or something more yes. humanitarian. But no, you know, I've, I've come to realize through the line of work that I've done is that, yeah, if you, if you really put those values, you know, at the for forefront of your life and business, you can really start to express yourself or express your values uh, in that way as well, too. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Delaware Limo is is the the best way that I've been able to uh, utilize my skills um, and what I have to offer to the world to be able to, you know, put people in the best position to, you know, offer what they have to offer to the world. Well, there's there are a couple of things that I think you guys do exceptionally well, and and I don't know if you and I even ever had a conversation about this, but one thing that I really admire about you and Alan and any, everyone else that's a part of it is that you literally have friends working with you side by side, which is a very unique experience. I mean, I think in an ideal world, everyone or many many of us would want to have just friends working with us side by side, right? Or friends of friends because that's the quickest way to trust within a person. Mm -hmm. But you guys actually made that a priority. Mm -hmm. Was that a discussion when it was all for first starting off saying, okay, hey, we're at this point now where we might be able to make one to two to three different hires. Mm -hmm. Let's hire the people that we know and the people that are close to us in order to build that company culture or was it just a matter of circumstances? Oh, this person's looking for a job. We have this job. Let's connect the two. Right. Yeah, I would say it's 50 50. Um, it wasn't really that the goal was like, hey, let's see if I can hire every single one of my friends. Definitely not. If that was the case, <laughs> we would have a lot more friends working with us probably. But um, but but also, like you said, I think the opportunity was there and, and we were like, hey, we know we need to. Um, yeah, we need we have some holes that need to be filled um, and mm -hmm. we feel like, hey, the people around us are capable of doing that and, and, and then some. And um, I do want to give a lot of credit to Alan here because that's one of uh, th one of the things that Alan's really good at is kind of seeing somebody's potential uh, before it's actually realized. So he was able to kind of see, OK, if we put this person in here in this role, you know, they might not be, you know, 100 percent where they need to be right now. But, you know, if mm -hmm. we invest, you know, put the, put them in the right position or give them the right resources, then, yes, you know, we can kind of be able to uh, get, you know, get them really um, uh, uh in, in a role where they feel like they're they're doing their life's purpose or doing something that mm -hmm. they're passionate about um so um it's definitely a challenge um it's uh you know you can't do anything fun uh you yeah. know because everybody can't take off at the same time because the company won't have anybody to run it um but but, <laughs> but the good thing is um and, and also one of the downsides um is that you know if you're, you're working with your friends and you know in a business environment um, like you said, you have to not only trust, but be able to give, communicate um, in a very uh, honest way. And a lot of times, if, if the feedback that you have to give to somebody who's your friend is not, you know, the most positive, you know, if, if, if that, uh, you know, I think a friendship allows that communication to happen uh, a little bit easier, but it's also, um, it could also be a barrier to that if, 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 you know, if you're, if you don't have a type of friendship where, you know, you guys mm. don't value being honest to each other or being giving somebody the, the feedback they need to hear, even though it might be might be hurtful or might be um, not as pleasant. Um, but the good, like I said, the good thing about it, though, is the fact that, you know, you're you're surrounded with people that, you know, have your best interests and then you have their best interests as well, too. So it, it kind of to me what it does for me is it it you're not just working for anybody, you know, so as you may or may not know, you know, I work with my father. Um, yes. You know, and I try, you know, I try, you know, sometimes my brother is helping the business as well, too. And like I said, we have all of our friends that work with us. So it's like, you know, if this thing doesn't work out, it's not just, you know, just some random people that, you know, are without a job or something. These are people that are that you see and deal with every day. So it, it puts a uh, a positive pressure in the sense where like, all right, you're going to have to dig deep to really figure it, you know, figure it all out and make sure it all works out in the end. But but um, but yeah, it's been good so far. Um, uh, trying to bring in, uh, you know, either expand the friend group or try to find ways where we can work virtually and things, so we can, you know, all travel and do stuff together. But but um, yeah, those are those are good problems to figure out at this point. <laughs> what is that pressure? What is that pressure when you wake up in the morning? Because I I know mm -hmm. you mentioned positive pressure and. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for anyone that's going to be listening to this, I'll create some context. So mm -hmm. Elam and I met however many years ago and just really become good friends ever since. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that we've been able to do in addition to you guys being able to create this space for a lot of our friends mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to work with you is that 
pretty much, I think, with, with the exception of one or two, we've been able to gift the Moments Worth Remembering book to pretty much every single one that's worked with us. Exactly. Or that works with you guys right now. Mm -hmm. A, what is that pressure? Is it any mm -hmm. different waking up with it in the morning and knowing that, okay, these are my friends and family that are working with me? And then mm -hmm. the other part that I've, I've been genuinely curious about, and that is, what have you learned about all of these people considering that you work with them, mm -hmm. you are their friend, mm -hmm. you've had chances to express probably some of your deepest, more profound moments throughout these mm -hmm. books. Like, mm -hmm. Do you see them differently now compared to, you, let's say, a year, two, three years ago? Mm -hmm. those, those are good questions. I would say um, the pressure more so is in the is in the entrepreneurial journey in the sense that like when you're when you're doing a business or you're doing something for the first time, um, you know, you're you're constantly proving to yourself every day that, you know, I can yeah. do this, you know, and sometimes it's you, you feel confident about it. Sometimes you don't. And having to bring everybody along with that, uh, you know, is it can be challenging. Or it, just, it puts the pressure on you in the sense where, like, you know, you have to be transparent and honest with somebody. If you're like, hey, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to be going out of business, I need to be able to tell somebody that. Or if I'm, if we're like, if, if I firmly believe that, yes, this is the, the pathway to, you know, financial freedom or, you know, we'll be able to provide a career for ourselves long term, you know, I need to be able to communicate that as well, too. So just, you know, forces you to be honest about yourself, about the situation that you're in and honest to the people around you. Um, and then when, yeah, waking up with that is more so just like, you know, what can I do to make sure that I'm giving my all um, for the mm. people around me? So it's so it's it's a it's a it's more positive um, uh, than anything in the sense where it's it, if, it, you know, there's never a lack of why I'm doing something, you know, yeah. um, working with the people that I work with. Definitely. Definitely. I've learned so much more about them, um, uh, working with them and having a friendship with them. Um, because a lot of times you might, you know, you call somebody your friend, um, but with friends, you only see them in a certain, you only see them in certain scenarios. Like you might hang yes. out with your friends when you're relaxing, or you might hang out with your friends when, you know, you're playing a sport or something. But when you work with somebody, you get to see people in a different environment. You know, they're in a very high stress environment. You know, there's highs and lows. You know, there's times where you know, there's awesome success and there's times where it's difficult and it's painful. Um, and being having friends uh, in being able to see your friends in those different settings um, really solidifies why they're your friends. Um, mm. Because, uh, you know, everybody that I've, I've been, you know, everybody that works with us has been has showed up in, in how in the capacity that we've asked them to show up for us and more, you know, and then some. And that's the biggest thing is that as friends, you know, you can say. You can say that you're there for somebody, but when you're actually there for them in their in their personal life, and then you're actually there for them in their work life, it really makes you appreciate the people that you have around you, and really makes you feel like you have a family around you. So um, it has, I think, it has made our friendships stronger, um, and has given us the ability to um, really put our actions behind our words, and 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 um, yeah, really show up for the people in the, the way we need to show up for them. Well, let me ask you this then. In, in knowing mm -hmm. both of those two things, was it was it easy or hard to put mm -hmm. those thoughts on paper as you were expressing the appreciation that you had for each and every single one of them? Because you see them from so many different facets, right? You see people mm -hmm. in extremely high and stressful situations. You see them when they're the complete opposite. You see them with everything in between. Mm -hmm. Was Was that a challenge to be able to even summarize it? Hey, this is what you mean to me and this is what our friendship means to not only me, but our company as well as the entire group of our friends. Exactly. Yeah. The challenge is the fact that, you know, when we're, when we're putting together a moment's worth, remember, remembering a, a letter to a friend, you told us that, you know, we couldn't do a whole book to them. So we had to yeah. keep it in one page. <laughs> <laughs> that was the challenge. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's so much that you go through and, um, when you see the, here's the challenging part. When you see somebody every day, you know, you, you tell them like, you know, thank you. You know, you get to show appreciation But when you're putting something in a letter, it forces you to go that much deeper. Um, things that might be a little bit more difficult to say in person, you're able to communicate it in that, in that, that letter or, or that, that message that you want to send to them. So it, that's the difficult part is like, if it's somebody that, you know, I've seen once a year, I can put all of the surface level stuff in a letter, boom, it's fine. 
But if it's somebody that you're seeing all the time, you, it forces you to really get deep um, and, and really uh, exp uh, express yourself um, in ways that you don't get to express yourself to that person every day. So that's that's the the challenging part, but it's also the, where the, the where the gold lies or where the um, the value lies, especially with the with the books with the uh, the book that I received, and we can talk about yeah. that and how you know how you surprised me with that one. Um, but that that was what was mind blowing to me is that you know you can talk to somebody every day, but then what they you know the message that they send to you is like wow I, I had no idea that you know they might be thinking this way or this is the impact yeah. that I had had in their life. And it's, it, it, it's, it, 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 um, yeah, it, it doesn't get old, you know, in, and any time, you know, I can always go back and, and read that, you know, read those submissions. And it's like, it, it hits the same every single time when you, yeah. when you read it. Yeah. Well, it, and you hit the nail on the head. I think it's one of those things where the more that you read it, the probably the variety of perspectives that you get. And most of the time, at least what I've discovered, hence why I started to do this is we don't express a lot of this to each other mm -hmm. over a course mm -hmm. of a life. Like we think mm -hmm. that you make a difference in somebody else's life, or we think that what I do is somehow impacting someone else. And maybe it is, right? Maybe mm -hmm. I'm able to instantly see the positive impact of holding a door for somebody or helping out somebody in X, Y, and Z way. But mm -hmm. rarely do you see the impact of it a week. A, a month, right. a year, 10 years down the road, right? I, I think I, I, I'm starting to think of the people in my life and I can almost pinpoint certain people for some of these formative moments of who mm -hmm. I have become. Mm -hmm. like people who have literally instilled so much wisdom in me that it's become my values. Mm -hmm. And I, I can mm -hmm. tell you, okay, this person said this X number of years ago, we were sitting here and mm -hmm. 10 to 12 years later, I'm operating based off of those principles all right. due to that conversation. Now, right. how often are you going to express that if exactly. you don't take the time to <laughs> sit down and write? Probably never, right? Exactly. Because exactly. then you'll make the assumption that, okay, this person knows when the reality of the matter is that person never, he has no clue. He or she right. has no idea right. how that conversation impacted you. And and I know for you, you, and I told you this before, you've always been the type of person that's at least in the time that I've known you, very genuine, very kind and intentional just with who you are and, and show up for other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I was curious, A, did you, did you know or did you expect the book to come your way? And B, what was that like? Maybe not even the initial moment. What was it like weeks later, months mm -hmm. later? Did, did it change anything? Right. So I, um, I didn't expect the book. Um, just because, like I said, I started working on you with the concept pretty early. And, um, I mean, I wasn't surprised the fact that you were surprised me with the book. That's a, that was a very old like thing to do as well too. Um, but, but I was, I was very surprised with the people that, um, made time to put submissions into the book. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's what surprised me so much is that, um, you know, a lot of times, um, it might feel like, uh, you know, it's a bother or a chore to somebody. And, and it, it was really, um, you know, heartwarming to see that, you know, people didn't feel that way and that they actually, you know, when, when called upon to uh, write something uh, valuable that, that they actually did. Um, I think that was very eye opening to me. Um, and seeing the people that made submissions as well, too, you know, like you said, you know, I have friends that I work with every day, I see every day. Um, and then, you know, I have some friends that I, you know, that, that don't. But the feedback from all the, the entire spectrum of friends was like, you know, for me personally, one of the things that I deal with is that I, I spend so much time working on on my spend so much time focused on what I'm working on that I mm -hmm. don't make the most amount of time to to you know continually check in on on you know friends and like I said, part of that is because I see a, a large group of my friends all every day, um, and I live with this guilt of just like man, I know I need to reach out to this person, but you know the time just like keeps slipping away, getting away. And, and and then it's easy to feel like, oh, okay, this person must hate me, you know, because, you know, I'm not, you know, reaching out to them as much as I would like to. But then like getting a, a submission from, you know, some of the submissions that I received in my book was just like, no, like that's not, that's not the case, you know, and, mm -hmm. and um, um, yeah, and then being able to like re use that as an opportunity to reconnect with people and, and um, uh, uh, yeah, really just, uh, like you said, just re- um, live the or rehear the impact that you've had on their life, and you might not have, you know, like I said, it's not like something that you 
when you meet somebody, you're like, okay, I'm gonna, yeah. my goal is to have this impact on their life. It's really like a passive thing. But when somebody brings it up to you and it's like, you know, this is really how, you know, what, how you made me feel, or this is what you inspired me to do. It really does. Um, yeah. It, it's just like, wow. Like, you know, I'm, I'm yeah, <laughs> it's, you, you get lost for words. Like when you read it, you're yeah. just like, yeah, I, I yeah. never imagined, <laughs> never imagined. <laughs> Well, also in your case, I, I think there were a handful of people. There's one specifically that I remember. I remember mm -hmm. finding her on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. there was some sort of connection between either her company being a client of Delaware Limo or vice mm -hmm. versa. And mm -hmm. instantly, she was like, absolutely. And she, she sent me the, the write-up within the number of hours, maybe a day. Mm -hmm. And I think if anything, it just speaks to who you are and the impact that you made in those people's mm -hmm. lives because it just shows that, okay, you haven't known her for six, seven, 10 years. Right. You probably have known her for months, right? if that. Exactly. And yet yeah. she was still able to put that, uh, however many sentences together in mm -hmm. expressing what makes you a gift in her life. So that, that's gotta be a pretty surreal feeling to experience because it's like, wow, this person I haven't even known for that long. And, I didn't even think I had an impact. Exactly, exactly. And that's some, we discussed some of these things when we were um, originally talking about the book and just like the possibilities of what, what can happen. And we talked about the idea of, yeah, you might have an encounter with somebody. They might spend a day, a week, a month in your life. But that short amount of time period might still be a pivotal moment in your life. And, and like yeah. you, never, you never get an opportunity to tell them that thing. So I think uh, one of the beauties of gathering um submissions for a book for somebody is you know it's you know getting a submission from you know your brother or like your mother or father you know somebody that's been around your whole life is is one thing but getting a submission from somebody that you spent a year or a month with or a week with and, yeah. and seeing how that amount of time had impact on them that really is is uh yeah it's 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 really powerful um and even people that uh you might feel like you don't have a close relationship with but mm. maybe it was one conversation or something that you said to them that really, you know, meant a lot to them. And they tell you that thing and you're like, wow, like that, that, that those, those uh, experiences are really, are very powerful as well, too. It makes mm -hmm. you realize your place in the world. It brings a lot of value because a lot of times you, you, when you're experiencing that thing in the moment, you might feel like it's not very consequential. Like, you know, this is just another person I'm talking to, but yeah. Yeah, but if somebody tells you how much that discussion went or how much that, that act of kindness or that small thing that you did for them meant to them, it makes you realize, wow, like, you know, you do have a lot of power as an individual in the world. Uh, no matter who you have, um, yeah, you don't have to be like a president or, you know, some powerful person. You can be have powerful impact on the world just based on the small actions that you take with 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 the people around you. So, like, you know, we try to pull that into some of the values for Delaware Limo, like mm -hmm. when we talk about excellence, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Like you might drive somebody 20 minutes, but the conversation that you guys have in that 20 minute ride might be, you know, it might be something that impacts somebody for, you know, their life. And it, cause I've had those moments on the driver end, you know, I've spoken to somebody on the way to the airport and they told me something that I, I, you know, added to my own life values. Um, so yeah, I, I love the, um, importance that it gives back to the individual in the sense mm. of like yeah like everything you do no matter how small everyone you encounter no matter how brief is is important and it is lasting who instilled that within you or what inspired you to even like build your own life around that um i think um i think there was a point in my life where i think we we mentioned um when um when i left home um, there was a point in my life where I felt like I lost a lot of the people that I, I called my close friends or family. Um, even at the time, you know, the, some of the, the relationship I had within my family was a little iffy at the moment. And I had to refine and redefine for myself, okay, who are the people in your life? Who are the people that are there for you? And so mm -hmm. in that space, you know, that's where I, you know, I met people like yourself and, you know, some of the people that work with me, Alan and, and Dave and Kevin. And, um, and, when you reestablish friendships like that and 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 grow them and develop them uh it really shows you the power of um yeah just the power that's out there in in others like uh, i don't know if i'm communicating this the way that i would like to but 
it it, it really shows that uh, pe- people will always show up for you in a really weird way. Like, and it's, it yes. seems coincidental. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know you, you do a lot of traveling, so you probably have experienced this uh, in, you know, in, in many different settings. I know from some of the stories you've told me of people just doing a- random acts of kindness and doing things for you that you wouldn't have expected them to, even if you can't, you know, speak the same language as them. It's almost like the same thing. You know, you have people that take chances on you, take chances yeah, on you, make bets with you, have trust in you when you didn't deserve that thing. Um, and you're like, wow, you know, like. You know, this is so amazing, you know, and it, it makes you want to reciprocate that um, into the world as well, too. So a lot of the, the the value that I get is mainly because people have done it to me. People have done these these acts of kindness to me. People have given me opportunities. People have continued to show up for me. So I feel like I, I like that's the least I can do is like pay that forward to everybody else. Who would you thank for that? Who comes to mind? Like who's who's um, really taken a chance on you? Do you remember the first handful of people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a the, definitely a few handful of people, you know, I, and these these people are going to be skewed more to like the earlier points of my life. So, for example, like um, I, I think, you know, Bobby, a mutual friend of ours, like, you know, he yeah. was he shaped my early career, you know, from, you know, showing me what's possible and um, uh, yeah, putting me in a, a position where I can learn um, and, and take chances. And, and you know, um, yeah, so Bobby's one of them. One of my good friends, Toby, I remember uh, uh, Toby, he used to be, uh, we were, he was Joe Venice with me in the past. Um, and uh, I remember uh, we used to play soccer together and I, I told him like, hey, look, you know, I want to play soccer, you know, uh, for, for my school. But like my mom wasn't, didn't, you know, didn't like the idea of me playing a sport. And, and um, but he was the one that like, you know, took like 25 bucks and bought me cleats, like my first pair of soccer cleats. And I remember like, that meant so much to me. Like, I'm just like, yeah, like people doing something like that. And then I also had a um a, a friend of mine. He actually went to the church. His name was uh, Brother Crampton. And I always remember uh-huh. like he he always he um he would show up. Like for example, I, I wanted to do uh when I was doing track, I was doing a uh, triple jump. I want and I started doing triple jump, and we didn't have a triple jump coach um at my school. And and he would you know come after work and like just come and like help me train and like help me practice and show up for me. And I thought that you know that was really powerful for me as well too. It's like you know, like why is somebody going out of their way to 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 do something like this for me? And sometimes it's like you know you don't understand it at the moment, but looking back at it, you know you just it, you understand that you're never gonna understand why they did it, but you just need to understand that you you should be doing the same thing. <laughs> uh, well, know, so those something are just that a few I, examples. You know, something that I've learned when it comes to just taking a chance on people and one of the biggest things, one of the biggest shifts in my own life that I started to realize is not taking those people or those situations for granted because not Mm. everyone does that, right? Right. Not everyone you come to cross paths with is going to take a chance on you personally or professionally or whatever other area. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that really celebrating and highlighting those people throughout our lives not only creates memories and topics for discussion but also hopefully encourages other people to do the same right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. think about their own experience and who has taken a chance on them because if there's anything that's true amongst all of us is that none of us truly got here alone period right right you know someone had to do that at a certain point someone had to in your case i think it was your dad right who kind of paved the way for you for driving Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that one is is a funny story because I remember being I remember the first day I started driving a taxi. Like my dad came to this idea and he was like, "Yeah, like you know, you should drive a taxi, make some extra money." And, and I, I I really to the, at that point it was really just a me so and I'm like, oh, "Look, I just want to make money. I don't want to ever have to do this again." Um, and it was I, I had that mindset for a very long time. And I remember the first day, I, yeah, one of the first days I started driving, it was like raining outside. And I was just like, man, this is really, you know, I don't feel like doing this. I'm not going to go to work. My dad came and, and he, didn't, he didn't say much, but this this moment always sticks to me. He came in the room and I was sleeping. He's asked me, like, are, are you going to, like, work today? And I was like, no, like, it's raining outside. And he's like, like, so what? Like, <laughs> like, like what about what about the rain? <laughs> and then he just left. <laughs> and it's going to be sunny tomorrow. And yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. After that. <laughs> exactly, right. And I just remember, like, laying in bed and it's like, you know what? Like, yeah, like, I'm really just making up excuses for myself right now. And so mm-hmm. I was, I was, well, I was one of the things I, I learned from my dad is, like, he, 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 does, that is one thing he doesn't do is he doesn't make uh, excuses for himself when any, when, when it comes to 
when it comes time for you to have to do something that uh, you need to do, um, you need to be able to put your, you need to just show up. You need to be able to just, yeah, no matter how, how difficult it is, just, just continue to show up. And, and I, I learned that lesson from him um, very early. Uh, and, and yeah, and, and because of that, you know, because of, yeah, the, those, those, you know, the, the, you know, the motivation, I guess you could call it um, in a way that he gave me and the grit that he instilled in, in me to be able to just continue to keep doing that line of work turned into what we have today. So yeah, yeah. there's a lot to thank, thank him for. <laughs> and for those that are, don't, don't know, what do you have today? How would you describe it? Where is it found? How can people be a part of it if they can? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So our, yeah. So the company we have today is Delaware Limo. Um, at the moment, uh, I think not 100% sure on this, but I think we are the largest uh, black car service limousine company in Delaware, just based on the number of vehicles, um, which is uh, really, really crazy to think of because, like I said, my father drove a taxi in New York City, came to Delaware, um, started driving a taxi there, pulled me into it because, you know, we just didn't know what was going on. Um, from there, uh, I met Alan. Alan uh, worked with me to start Delaware Limo. Um, and now, um, you know, from that whole experience, you know, we really started Delaware Limo as a uh, as Delaware Limo and Taxi as a yeah. way to really just, you know, find a way to provide for my father and, you know, maybe make a, some extra some extra money for ourselves. But what it ended up turning into was uh, understanding that this industry, this work that we do of chauffeuring and providing transportation for people is actually a lot more than that. Um, yes. It's actually a lot more about connecting with people. It's actually a lot more about getting intimate with people, creating a space where intimacy is required, um, comfort is required, a lot of trust is required. Um, and uh, and from that, you get you build relationships with people um, and you uh, with yeah, so, yeah, with the clients that you serve and then also the people that you work with. Um, and so that's what we have right now. So Delaware Limo at the moment is basically just a, uh, a uh, um, a medium where we get to deliver a service to our clients, which is transportation. But through that service, we get to connect with people in a way that I would never get to connect with somebody in my day to day life. You know, I, I get to interact with, you know, people from all walks of life, from all different places that, you know, yeah, I never would have encountered. Um, I get to go places or in all of, you know, chauffeurs get to go places that they never would have went. Um, and then from that, we get to, you know, from where we are now, you know, we've built our, t our fleet up to, I think we have 20, 21, maybe 22 vehicles at the moment. Wow. Um, we have uh, 20, 24 employees and growing. Um, and what, yeah, and, and really what we have right now is just like, you know, back to what we started off discussing is just finding where people fit in the world. You know, there's people that come from, I think that's, that's the most uh, satisfying part of what we do is when you see somebody that finds where they fit in the company and not only the company, but like in society and like, this is, this is what yeah. I want to wake up and do every day. Um, and then seeing that person wake up and do that every day. And then seeing how that impacts, you know, a client when they get feedback, that is the, the, the most beautiful part of what we do and what we are trying to continue to increase our impact is, if if we you know just a matter of finding the right people that that want to you know that uh derive value and derive um uh, uh energy from this type of work that we do and those are you know i guess that's a call to action to anybody that feels like uh you know that they like being in those type of environments and and get energy from other people those are the type of people we want to work with and put them in a position to be in front of other people <laughs> so uh, in a nutshell that's what we do here at Delaware Limo. we're trying to do that on a nationwide level <laughs> Two things. So yeah. first is for anyone that's listening that let's say actively uses Uber or Lyft or any other ride sharing services, A, mm -hmm. is Delaware Limo an equivalent comparison to that? So for example, if they wanted to try that, is it feasible? Is it relatively the same when it comes to price? Mm -hmm. uh, or is it a lot higher than those experiences? And then the second part is for any business owners that listen mm -hmm. to this, who are you guys looking to connect with that mm -hmm. would essentially not only bring value to you guys as a company, but also to them? Awesome. Great. The great two questions. So the first for the client end is, um, I, you know, I'll admit I still use Uber and Lyft pretty frequently just yeah. because it's a, it's a completely different service. <laughs> Um, what we offer and provide for people is uh, a lot of the things that we discussed earlier is like trust, 
um, uh, uh, predictability, um, professionalism. Um, so basically what, what, we, what we're providing for you is no matter what, when it is, what time it is, you, you know for sure what you're going to get and it's going to be the same thing. Um, and then also, you know, with, with the human element, you know, with Uber and Lyft, you might use an Uber driver once you never see him again, no matter how great that guy is, um, you can't, you know, request a specific person. But here we're, it's all about building a relationship with the people or with mm. this person or people in our organization. So from that, a lot of our clientele have become like family to us and have built relationships with our, our chauffeurs in ways that I've never imagined. So that, that's what we offer to our clients is if you want something more meaningful than just uh, it, uh, than just a ride somewhere, you know, you want to build an experience or you want to receive an experience that's, you know, you're going to leave at the end of your trip feeling like, wow, I, I you know, either you know, learned, you know, met a new, uh, a soul that enriched me, or I, I um, you know, had an experience with others, you know, because, you know, a lot of work that we do is recreational. We do it in, in you know, we offer limousines and party buses and sure. stuff like that, too. All of that is mainly about giving the people that you're surrounded with an experience that they're going to remember. And, you know, eventually, you know, when they get an opportunity to write a moment's worth remembering book uh, for one of their friends, they're going to say, hey, remember that time, you know, we were in the party bus and, you know, we went to blah, blah, blah. Those are the type <laughs> of experiences that, that we want to create, you know, for, for other people. So, um, yeah, so that that's uh, really what we're offering for our clients. For our uh, for business owners, um, what we offer for our business owner business clientele is um, I would say the most important asset for business owners is their time. Um, so we save our business owners time and energy, um, by, uh, not, they don't have to worry, um, and do the thinking of that they usually do. Um, you know, a lot of business owners, they, they think about all the variables and they, you know, they have, they worry a lot because of that. We take a lot yes. of that worry and, and stress off of their plate, um, working with us that, you know, um, uh, that's the value that we offer for them. And then also, uh, business owners like to use us. Be, uh, as a service for their for their clients and their employees as well too um, because they they want the best for the people that they're serving and for their staff and so that's what we offer for them is the ability to put their clients in in a position to have these experiences as well as, as I described for our clients so um, so yeah if, if you're a business owner and you care about your employees um, and you care about your your staff like your clients yeah allow them to you know ha have a Delaware limo experience to really um uh yeah, see what it feels like, uh, you know, to be taken care of and, and um, be, it, like I said, it's more than just the transportation. It's more so the peace of mind that we're delivering and, and the uniqueness of the experience and, and, and the predictability in that. So, um, yeah, that's the, if, yeah, if you're a business owner, please let us be able to share that with your, your staff and your clients. The Delaware Limo experience. And I can vouch yeah. for everything that you just said because I, I've obviously taken it multiple times and similar thing. I think it's only not only the connection that you develop with the person, the driver, or whoever even makes the booking, but it, it's it's also the effortless um time that it takes from my end in order to be able to create that and then also from mm -hmm. your end to not only create a, a booking but uh follow up and all the other things that are needed which right. do take time from the recipient's perspective right so right. in some ways you are giving them time to pursue other things that they otherwise would have to sacrifice that time exactly. in order to make those other things uh possible now exactly. with with that one last thing where yep. can people find you and where else can people connect with you personally outside of yeah. your company? Yeah, of course. So one of my goals and one of the things I talked to to you about pers you know, recently is about making the making myself available uh, to deepen the connections uh, that I have created uh, with people, uh, whether through work or in my personal life. So I, I'm trying to make myself more available to just talk about things, you know, uh, uh, give ideas back and forth. I've tried to decrease my social uh, media uh, footprint recently, but I'm still available um, primarily on like LinkedIn. Um, I can be reached. I can also be reached, from, you know, from the company. You can always call and ask for me and, and uh, um, call Delaware Limo and ask for me. Um, our website is Delaware.limo. Um, and yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Ella Mahamaji. Um, and uh, you can, uh, yeah, send me a DM, send me a message. And I think that that would be my, my platform of choice in terms of uh, receiving any requests.